A portion of this video is sponsored by Squarespace, the premier resource for creating and managing your own website. All right, let's check which is better, uh, OLED or QLED. What? 79,900,000 results? Nope, 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 nope. So yeah, we've all been there. You're, you're shopping for TVs and you don't know which one to get. Maybe you're shopping online. You can't even see the sets in person. It could be daunting to try to figure out which tech and which TV is best for you. Buying a TV is not something you do every year, or even every few years. You wanna make sure you're making the right long-term decision. And right now there are two main TV technologies out there. QLED and OLED. As you try to decide which set to buy, I'm gonna help try to answer all the questions and demystify the technology behind both and help you make the right buying decision. So before we get into specifics, let me at least explain what each of the technologies mean. And I don't have a dog in this fight. Whichever technology you get will be right for you. I just want to explain the differences. So let's start with OLED, O-L-E-D stands for organic light emitting diode. And essentially it treats every pixel kind of like its own mini skewel RGB light bulb, meaning each pixel is lighting up, changing color or turning off. QLED on the other hand is sort of a new generation of LED technology and the Q stands for quantum. And it's not quantum like Avengers Endgame style quantum. Uh, it's quantum in the sense of small. So essentially it's an LED panel that has a tiny film on top of it that reflects light when it's shown on it to either show red, green, or blue. It sort of just enhanced the color and vibrancy of what you already get from LED panels. So if you're looking to buy a QLED TV, you'll likely find them from really only three manufacturers. So the one we're using for this demonstration is TCL with their new 2026 series. We have a 55 inch variant here, but available in 65 or even smaller sizes. Uh, there's Samsung at the high end, and then there's Hisense sort of sitting below TCL. And those three companies together form what they call the QLED Alliance. And this technology was built to compete head to head uh, against OLED just at some lower price points. So QLED is a really good technology, and there's some instances we'll talk about where it's clearly a superior option to what you get with an OLED set. But there are a few examples where OLED is just the king. So as a general rule, OLED sets are usually thinner than what you get with LED because they don't have the whole backlit panel. In fact, some OLED TVs are so thin that the hardware that makes them work is an entirely separate box uh, that attaches usually via a cable. So if you want a really flush wall-mounted TV, usually OLED is going to be your best way to go. But probably the biggest advantage of an OLED set is the black levels. It's kind of always what you hear as sort of the big reason people are buying these TVs. When the pixels are off, they are straight up black because they're off and QLED and LED just can't compete with that because the pixels are still on, they're just kind of a dark, dark gray that your brain usually sees as black. So if black levels are the most important thing to you, then an OLED set is going to be the way to go. So the other reason that a lot of people go for OLED and reason you might want to consider it is viewing angle. Since they don't have a backlight, you don't have any variation in what you see on viewing angle. If you're off to the side, for example, it's gonna look exactly the same as if you're looking at it straight on, because each pixel is kind of doing its own thing instead of relying on panels to sort of light up all those pixels like you get with QLED. And then the last big advantage of OLED is response time. If you are watching movies, sports, or you're a gamer, you won't have any sort of blur or ghosting that you might get with other technologies. Not saying you'll get them with QLED, but if you want the fastest refresh you can get, OLED is still, at least generally, the way to go. So while OLED's got obviously a ton of advantages, there are areas where it's not perfect. And perhaps the biggest one, the Achilles heel of OLED technology is brightness. Since each pixel is doing its thing, they just can't get as bright as QLED sets can generally as a rule. So if your TV is put up in an area where you've got a lot of direct sunlight, you watch a lot of TV during the day, it's something you might want to be aware of. And if you put the TV set side by side, you should be able to see a difference. As somebody who owns an OLED set that is in sort of a high light area, 
I don't notice it that much. When you're starting from true black, really any color next to that tends to look bright. So to my eye, I don't mind it, but there are people that disagree that really want the brightest set possible. Uh, and for those folks, QLED uh, is generally gonna be a better way to go. So one of the last areas of concern for OLED, and this is probably the most minor uh, of all of them, is burn it. Something that used to affect old plasma TVs that we saw. So if you don't know what burn-in is, it's when sort of you get an image that stays on the screen, something you're watching all the time, whether it's sports and you know, ESPN logo is always in the same location or news where you've got a logo set in the same spot or you play a game all the time. Uh, OLED tech has gotten pretty good about mitigating burn-in. Usually there are screensavers that'll pop up and there's some screen kind of refreshes you can do inside of the UI to sort of fix those issues. Current reports are generally saying it takes about 4,000 hours to get burn in on a set. So not likely something that you're gonna have to worry about. If you're the type of person who does and watches or plays the same thing over and over again for presumably up to 4,000 hours, it's something to at least be aware of. And obviously buying a TV, like price is a big concern. And traditionally, OLED is going to be the more expensive technology, but there are some caveats. Obviously, there are huge sales that go on, but if you're comparing, let's say, an LG OLED or a Sony OLED to Samsung's top of the line QLED sets, there may not be that big a huge difference. But as you drop down sort of the QLED food chain and you look at some of the TCLs and some of the Hisense, you'll see a bigger price variance there. But the lower down you go, obviously the lesser QLED technology you're getting. So the picture may not look as good as sort of the higher end counterparts. But that's oftentimes a misconception. When you have a TV up on your wall, you don't have something else that you're comparing it to. You don't usually have two sets next to each other like you'd have at a Best Buy. What you have on your wall tends to look pretty good because most TVs nowadays are some version of really good. So whichever tech you go for, once it's home, you'll probably enjoy it anyway. Now on the flip end of that, QLED definitely has some advantages and they're sort of, they hit right at OLED's weaknesses. And the biggest one is brightness. They can just get brighter. They generally will have better color accuracy at peak brightness, which can give you generally better HDR picture. And then next, you never have to worry about burning. You could have that same sports ticker or same news logo up for more than 4,000 hours and never have to worry about getting that burn in on your set. So QLED is an awesome technology, but it's not perfect. There are some negatives to considering QLED. Uh, the first one is generally the panels are a little bit thicker because there's more tech inside it than what you have with most OLED sets. And usually they're the thickness of like, let's say a canvas. And for a lot of people that might not be a deal breaker, but if you envision your set being super flush mount against a wall, you may want to at least look at the thickness of your QLED set. But perhaps the biggest disadvantage of QLED speaks to the advantage of OLED and that's black levels. And I've talked about this, you know, because there's backlight technology happening Black is never really black. Really the best you can get is a really dark, dark gray. The most expensive QLED sets do a really good job of getting that gray as dark as possible. And chances are your brain will see that and recognize it as black and you may not notice a difference. But if you actually focus on the color itself, you will definitely see that it is not uh, a true black. Another disadvantage here is viewing angles. You know, whereas OLED, you could sit anywhere in a room and still get a beautiful picture because of that backlight tech that you're not always gonna get that same perfect sweet spot you get if you're sitting in front of it. If you're off to the sides, you may start to see, depending on the set you have, that edge light kind of bleeding through, especially uh, at night. And the last probably major disadvantage is potential blooming. That's kind of when you get a, a halo around really bright objects. Now, higher end QLEDs do a really nice job of kind of mitigating that. You'll see it on some of the lower end sets and it's by no means a deal breaker, something you at least may notice from time to time. All right, so those are the pros and cons of the two different technologies. The big question obviously is like, which one are you gonna get? And I don't know your budget or your size, so I can't speak to that, but I can say generally who should get which set. So if all you care about is the best picture, you want the best image and you're really not that concerned about budget, then go OLED. You're going to love those deep blacks and the amazing sort of picture fidelity that you can get from OLED. But if you're the type of TV buyer who's like, I just want the best value that I can get and I want a really awesome picture, I think for everybody else, 
QLED is a really good option. You can pick and choose what kind of tech you want. You can pick the sizes that you want. It doesn't bother me that they're not flush mounts. And a really good QLED picture generally looks almost as good as an OLED picture. And again, if you don't have these two sets side by side, you're never gonna know the difference. So sort of having sets available at various price points and various sizes and still getting a really awesome set, I generally would recommend QLED to most. But again, if you want the absolute best picture or you want a TV flush mount to a wall and you wanna have multiple viewing angles, OLED is still gonna be the way to go. So at this point, I think it's probably safe to say you are familiar with Squarespace, right? I don't have to tell you what they do. You probably already know. But they do a lot of other things that you might not know. They're not just a great place to go to create an easy website. It's actually an all-in-one tool that lets you do kind of everything you would want from a website. As somebody who ran a site for years, keeping up with search engine optimization or SEO uh, was a huge time suck for me. Uh, Squarespace does that for you. They give you SEO tools. If you're looking to set up email scheduling, you can do that as well. You can create your own custom URL, create your email address, custom all inside of the Squarespace platform. Anything you want to do on a website, Squarespace just makes it simple. If you have an idea for your own e-commerce store, Squarespace has you covered. Uh, it's a really simple platform to use. You don't need to be a developer, so the tools are pretty much drag and drop. You can go in and create your perfect website, your perfect blog, your perfect store, whatever you want, Squarespace can make it possible. So if it sounds like something you wanna check out, obviously go to squarespace.com, get a free trial. You can build out your website and see if it's right for you. And when you're ready to launch, and you want to get your website live, if you want a custom URL, uh, go to squarespace.com slash John Rettinger and you can save 10%.